Hello again. I had a member who wrote me and said they were trying to measure the output voltage of a fly swatter using a standard voltmeter. And they had damaged a few meters trying to measure that. And so I thought I would show you how to go about doing that. This particular fly swatter cost about $7 US. And we can see it has an output voltage of 2,750 volts. So that's DC, not AC. I think a few of you are still confused about what this transient generator is actually doing. If we look at the output waveform of this, it actually puts out a spike. And that's going to have an exponential decay. And that cycle will sit there and repeat. Typically I'll give it five cycles of this spike. And the way that I measure this spike is I look at the peak to peak amplitude here. And I'll say that that's, for example, 2 kV. And then I'll measure that at the half height. So if we divide that by 2 at 1 kV, and I measure how far it's decayed at that point. And this will typically be in the 100 microsecond range. And then some tests I'll run at 50 microseconds. And then the rep rate is quite long. This is going to be several seconds between here and here. Typically about 5 seconds, sometimes a little longer. When you're looking at things like this fly swatter, this is actually a DC voltage. So the output of this thing, I would imagine, I haven't traced out the circuit, but I can imagine it's just a little switching supply with a transformer. And there's probably some rectifier here that just feeds into a cap. And then this just goes on out to the output. So this cap here is going to hold all the charge until the bug gets across here. And then he's going to be a sad bug because he gets zapped. So when we look at the resistance of the meter, it's going to be quite high. And that's not going to typically cause this thing to arc down to zero volts. So what you're going to see in this case, this fly swatter is again rated for 2700 volts. So you'll see some DC voltage. And we hook up our meter. This is going to decay down to some voltage. And that's just going to be based on the loading of this. And again, this thing's going to be switching at some frequency, and there could be some ripple on this thing. But basically, you'll have some steady state DC voltage. And that voltage could be high enough to break down the meter and cause it to get damaged. So where I'm going to give it just a very short pulse, and then I'm going to repeat that every several seconds. You're putting something into the meter that's a sustained high voltage. Most of these meters are only rated for maybe 1,000 volts. And I imagine most of those will handle a voltage somewhat higher than that, but, you know, I think you're pushing your luck trying to measure something like this fly swatter directly. So just because I'm showing testing these meters at several kV doesn't mean that you can stick it on the output of a microwave oven transformer and put that indefinite sine wave into it and expect it's going to live. Chances are pretty good it's not. One way to measure this type of high voltage is to use an attenuator. I showed how to make this one in a previous video. This is rated for several thousand volts. It's potted. If you take this apart, you're just going to see black. So this goes between the meter and the device I'm trying to measure. Another way to do it is to use a high voltage probe. This is one of my homemade ones. This thing's using a 10,000 volt rated resistor. And there's also a wire in here that I'm using for a capacitor and a little bit of ferrite down in the bottom. And again, I showed how I made these in a previous video. And of course, we have our very high voltage probe. This thing is rated for several tens of thousands of volts. So we can see here, if I charge this thing up, I'll just push the little button. And it's got a fair amount of spark. So that's not something you're going to want to hook right up to the meter because what's going to end up happening is while the input impedance of this is quite high, eventually the components are going to break down and that's what's going to end up damaging the meter. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and we can see it's reading 2,770 volts. See it decays a little bit. 
what I'm going to do is just select AC volts and you can see it has no AC content which I wouldn't expect it would have this is the Unity UT90A you may have seen this in several of my videos it's been damaged quite a few times and repaired I've actually burned several traces on the circuit board and laid down wires to repair them but this meter still works fine selector switch is a little rough now some of the damage that was done is actually on the selector switch what we're going to do is hook this thing directly up to our fly swatter and let's just see if this will survive this meter has actually done quite well through all of my testing again just the fact that I've been able to repair it at all that's pretty decent most of the meters I can't it'll actually take out the controller chip and that's usually the end of the meters I'll just go ahead and hook this thing up and let's see what happens we'll set this thing to the thousand volt range and we can see here it's reading roughly 1900 volts so it's loading it down quite a bit but it's pretty good that it's able to survive it let's just try letting that supply charge up yeah no problem at all <laughs> so again I'm not recommending you do that I would imagine quite a few meters are not going to survive that test well I haven't put out a video in about a month now so looks like the viewership is still going up pretty steady so I'd like to welcome all you new members I assume that you're here to watch some of these meters get tested to failure that's definitely what I'm doing on this channel. Well, till the next video, later. This is a 100 picofarad 18 kV cap. You can see that's in parallel with the output of the fly swatter. One of the tests I perform is a little static discharge. I use this little grill starter. And I characterize this using an oscilloscope. And I posted up that data. Uh, this thing doesn't put out a whole lot of energy. Typically for a static discharge, we'll use a human body model. That's going to be 100 picofarad that's in series with a 1.5 kV. Obviously with this setup, I don't have any resistance. Okay, so what I'm going to do is apply this transient directly to the meter. And we'll see if it can withstand this. This meter has actually passed quite a few of the static discharge tests using the grill starter. Let's just see if it'll survive with this 100 picofarad capacitor charged to 2.7 kV. Just go ahead and give it a second to charge. Unfortunately, you can see that little discharge has damaged the meter. You know, and I've damaged this meter before. My guess is it's probably that same D46. Looks like one hit with the transient generator is enough to semi clear it out. You can see it's got, uh, I assume, 560 millivolts of drop there. Notice in the resistance mode though. Still seems to read correctly. Well, you can really smell it. Let's just try her in the AC volts mode. Unfortunately, the batteries weren't charged up in the new camera, so I don't think we're going to have the high speed footage of that. You notice that the meter still powers up just fine. Boy, you could really smell it after that second hit, and it really made a pop. So let's just have a look on the inside of this. Whew. 
That charred it pretty bad. See some of the traces that I had rebuilt before. I think that's one of the jumpers there. Right there is for sure one of them. See if we can get it dark over one more time. <laughs> 